Edited by USEA. Chapter 15. Call Me Psychiatric Help 5. The Doctor is in. Day 12. Time approximately 10.30 a.m. Location. Broccoli Fields. Big 52S Branch. Broccoli, the capital of, well, you guessed it. All around the town rose fortified farms surrounded by green and yellow fields. The crop didn't seem healthy nor yummy, but growing anything in the stainted and sunless land already seemed a great success. A couple of figures in the distance were working in the fields, but they didn't pay any attention to the yellow filly moving from the north along the Big 52. Unlike the farmers, a solitary sprite bot patrolling the road immediately noticed a yellow bolt and stopped broadcasting its usual patriotic songs, instead turning towards the incoming filly. Hi puppy smiles, have you got a mom the filly zoomed past watcher. And? Oh, foals. Hey, wait you little lady. Wait. The sprite bot chased puppy trying to catch her attention. Sorry questioner, I'm really in a hurry. I want to get to broccoli before my mom goes away again. The filly kept zooming while she replied to the robot summons. Please? At least tell me what happened in Ivory Tower. I can't follow you into town. Ah, uh, nothing special. Some stars fell from the sky and all the town went boom. It was fun and a little scary, but mom wasn't there so it's all right. Yes, but what made those stars fall? Insisted the robot. Ah, uh, I don't know, the filly stopped abruptly, suddenly realizing something. Oh no. I forgot it. Stupid puppy. Stupid, stupid. The foal began hitting herself on the helmet with a hoof. What now? What did you forgot? From the robot's voice it was easy to tell he was both worried and stumped. Was it important? Puppy jumped down from the scooter and trotted towards a rock, hitting it with her head and continuing her mantra. Stupid. Bonk. Stupid. Bonk. Stupid. Bonk. Stop that. You'll break your helmet, puppy. Now please calm down and tell me what's wrong. Maybe I could help you or find some pony that can help. The sprite bot floated next to the filly in yellow, bumping gently against her shoulder. Come on, you're a big pony. I'm sure it's nothing that can't be solved. No. Bonk. You don't understand. Bonk. It's too late and AO. Bonk. Stupid. Bonk. Stupid. Bonk. Oh, come on puppy. You remind me of the robot's voice stopped for a moment as if he caught himself thinking about things he didn't want to recall. Ah, uh, I'm sure we can fix it. I'm your friend. Don't cry little one and tell me what's wrong. We will find a solution, okay? Just don't do like that, please. The robot's voice was filled with pain and sadness. Puppy must have caught the change in Watcher's voice because she stopped headbutting the rock, sat down and sighed. I, I forgot a very important thing, Mr. Questioner, but I had to do it when I was in Ivory Tower and now that the stars are fallen and the place is gone I can't do it anymore. I am a silly pony. Oh, I understand, do you need it to be there? I'm sorry, puppy. Really, the robot floated beside the little pony for a while before asking, by the way, what was that you had to do? I, I had to ask a falling star to find my mom. There were so much of them, they would find mom for sure. When you see a falling star and you make a wish it will come true for sure. But I forgot. Now I have to find mom myself again, it's not fair. You forgot to wish upon a star. All this scene about a wish. I can't believe I the robot paused, noticing the crushed spirit of the filly, and rapidly changed tack. It's bad, but it's not that terrible, don't worry, there was a long embarrassed pause, puppy. I had a friend that sometimes acted exactly as you are doing right now. She was a very smart pony, but she lost herself in a glass of water because of the most incredible details. Sometimes it was really important, some other times it wasn't, but her way of panicking and acting impulsively worsened things a lot. Panicking is not good for clever young fillies. You are a clever young filly, right? Puppy sighed and nodded, looking down. Perfect, this was what I wanted to hear. Since you are a smart pony, I'm sure that you don't even need the help from a star to find your mom. I mean, look at you. You already arrived here without those useless stars. You can go wherever you want with your determination and your friends. 
The filly tilted her head a little, looking at the sprite bot with a hopeful expression. Really? Yes, puppy, really? I think that if there is a pony that could really find your mother is not a magic pony living on a star, or some sort of fairy pony with butterfly wings. That pony is you, puppy. So, why you don't stop moping and show me some of your enthusiasm? Slowly, the frown on puppy's muzzle turned to a faint smile and kept growing until Watcher's words hit her little head and she understood them. Yush. I'm Space Captain Andromeda. I am the best pony ever. I will find mom for sure. Who need a stupid star anyway? Thank you, Mr. Questioner. The filly hugged the sprite bot, giggling. I'm sure mom will be in broccoli or in the town after broccoli, at worse. I'm almost there. Why a why? The voice chuckled. This is the spirit, puppy. Now go and get him. Oh, and it's Watcher. My name is Watcher. Sure, Mr. Questioner. Not Questioner, Watcher. Insisted the sprite bot. Puppy sighed, trying to be patient. Really, I don't see you watching a lot, but for sure you make a lot of questions. So if you really want a name like that, it's Questioner. No more complaints. But it's not my name. Protested the voice. Puppy shrugged. Now it is. Live with it. Really, no other voice protested when I gave them names. Oh, I give up. Do as you want, stubborn little pony. I have to go. Just try to stay out of troubles. Okay. I stay always out of troubles. I'm a good filly. Watcher chuckled one last time before the voice was replaced by the usual patriotic music and the sprite bot floated away. Puppy watched at the robot disappearing behind a hilltop and sighed. I can't see why he doesn't like the name I gave him. I mean, it's so much better than the one he had before. Day 12, time approximately 11.30 a.m., location, Broccoli, Big 52S Branch. The town of Broccoli was protected by a group of local guards and a couple of squads from the hired hooves, not to real army, since Napani was supposed to threaten the town. From the night before, the guards were now running double shifts keeping all their eyes pointed toward south. From what little news Lonesome Pony gave, the wild herd was on the warpath, and this time they had sticks, so it was vital that every pony who could use a weapon was always ready to get up, grab his rifle, and defend the wall. The mercenaries wore black ass masks and heavy armor. Nothing special if compared to a steel ranger's power armor, but for the wasteland they were still equipped top notch. All of the hired hood sported anti-matrial rifles or assault rifles, while the broccoli militia was a little more lightly armed and way less armored. A pair of militia ponies patrolling the northern fields noticed puppy approaching along the road. One had already taken aim when the foal suddenly came to a halt and sat down, holding one hoof against the side of her helmet as if she were listening to something. The pair looked at one another in confusion. Attention! Incoming request of opening a communication bridge with structure Solaris stable. Checking authorization. Ideas valid. Opening communication. Solo's voice replaced that of the suits. All these ID checks are annoying, they could prove to be a problem in case on an emergency, I suggest you to lower your security measures. Puppy sat down in the middle of the road, smiling. Oh, it's you blue voice, how are you? The filly waved a hoof at the approaching guards, who simply waved back and exchanged another confused glare. The plan is not going as predicted, D018, this is why I am calling you. I have some questions for you. Solos hadn't even bothered to say hello, but Puppy knew he was just a bit shy, so the filly let that thing slip. Questions. Guessing game. Yay. Ask me, I'm world champion of guessing game. The filly clapped her hooves in joy, she loved to play. One of the two guards levitated his rifle, readying the shot, but the other stopped him with a hoof. Wait, I think this is that ghost from the radio, I don't think we are supposed to shoot her, besides, I'm curious. Solos went on, I have contacted the facilities at Solaris Tunnels 1 and 2, but in Tunnel 2 I found some sort of artificial intelligence controlling the place. Since you once said something about being friend with other AI I wanted to know if you knew something about this one. Its designation code is P7. Oh, Miss Voice. 
She is my very best voice friend. She is funny and friendly, and she is the best funny bot ever. Solos paused for a moment. I take that as a yes. That program was not supposed to be installed in a military base. Do you know why there is a P7 pony machine interface operating in Solaris Tunnel 2? Sure. She was lonely at Salt Cube City, so I helped her move house. Now she has a lot new friends. Ah, uh, do you want to be her friend too? The unicorn guard sighed, but his friend poked him with a hoof. See? She's been in Salt Cube and at the tunnel, she must be the ghost. Wasn't she looking for her mother? Or something like that? The unicorn shrugged. I don't care, look, if she is the pony you are talking about we should simply ignore her and keep our eyes open for some real threat. The two ponies trotted away, taking a path that headed to the nearest farm. In the meantime Solos and Puppy continued to talk over the radio. Actually, I wanted to grant me access to the weapon storage, but that program cut me out from any administration rights and banned me from the local net. So, ah, uh, you wanted to be her friend, but she didn't want? No, I need to get access to the weapon storage. Are you even listening to what I say? Puppy giggled. Silly voice, you don't need to be shy. She is a super friendly voice, and I am sure that she wants to be your friend. And you two will be best friend forever, because you are blue, and she is pink and every pony knows that pink is the color of fillies, and blue the color of colts and puppies stopped, gasping. What now? Solo's voice had grown annoyed, as usual talking with that crazy anomaly was an impossible feat. I know. You have fallen in love with her. Don't worry. I'm fixing that. I'm a super expert of love. What? No. That's not what time meant at all. Talking with you is a complete waste of time. I'll find another way to get those weapons, get lost. Solos cut off the communication. Oh, he's so shy. Puppy finally turned toward the two guards. Hi, I'm Puppy Smiles. Have you seen my mo? Hey, where have they gone? The guards had disappeared, leaving the foal on her own. Day 12, time approximately 12 o'clock, location, Broccoli. Big 52S branch. Puppy reached the walls of Broccoli still confused about being left alone like that. This had never happened to her before. Well, except that one time in Sun City. But it was different. Ponies there were weird. Oh well, it didn't matter. There were plenty of pretty ponies here. So it was going to be easy to find some help. The foe found herself in front of a closed gate. And sat down, looking up at the wall's crest. A pony with a gas mask was looking back at her. Hi there. Can I get inside puppy please? I'm looking for my mom. Ah, uh, if I can't get in, can you tell her to come out? The masked pony ignored the filly and trotted away, patrolling the wall. Hey, I'm talking with you, funny muzzle. Oh, hey. Nothing. These stupid ponies had to be deaf and blind. What now? Puppy tried banging at the door, but patience wasn't exactly her virtue, so she decided to trot around the wall and see if there was another way in. The wall was composed of a patchwork of metal carcasses, welded together to ensure that there were no gaps between them. Suddenly Puppy heard the sound of gunshots coming from the south, quickly followed by the shouting of guards as they rushed around the walls towards the noise. None of them paid any attention to the foe outside. When the filly reached the other side of the town, she noticed that there were way more ponies on the walls. A lot of them were wearing those black masks, and some others had helmets and crappy rifles. Sometimes a pony looked down at her, but when she tried to talk with them they simply turned away, and resumed looking out into the distance just like their friends were doing. This was beginning to frustrate the foal. Ah, uh, Mr. Voice, isn't there any secret passage to get inside? Analyzing. Connecting to Equestria Cartography Owns Park. Warning. Broccoli not found in the database. Switching to auto map mode. The town has two access points, one from north and one from south. Both accesses in this moment are inaccessible. Puppy side. So, we are close outside. Affirmative. A rapid analysis of the external walls doesn't reveal the presence of any other entrance. Advised solution, asking to be let in and waiting for a positive answer. Puppy frowned. What? 
knock at the door and wait. The foe smiled enthusiastically, finally understanding what the interface meant. Oh, okay, Aidoki. I can't do that, I'm good at asking things. The filly trotted merrily toward the southern door, only to be interrupted again by the suit. Attention. Incoming request of opening a communication bridge with structure Solaris Tunnel 2. Checking off, oh. The suit's voice was muted and replaced by P7's aw, shut up you grumpy routine. Hi puppy, how are you? I hope you're fine, because it has been a while since our last chat, and I was really worried that you forgot about me, so I was thinking that I should call you just to be sure you were alright, Ah, uh, are you alright? Puppy jumped on her hooves in excitement. Miss Voice. I almost forgot to call you. I have a lot of things to tell you. Oh, oh. But wait. I have super duper extra news for you. Really? Well. I can't wait to hear it, but before I wanted to ask you why you activated the Pony Meads net. I mean, you said you didn't want ponies to get hurt, and then. You have a cold friend. And then you have a cold. Wait, I have a what? Why am I the last one that finds out these things? Puppy nodded wisely. Yup, but he's super shy and he say you were a little nasty with him. There was a short pause while the AI tried to elaborate the new information. But I don't have a cold friend. I don't even know anything about love. The foal frowned. You don't know anything about love. How's that possible? Well, you see. It seemed that love trashed the P5 project since the A decided that love was more important than, let's see, survival of the planet, so she mixed up her priorities a bit, and, well that's a sad story, you don't really want me to tell it. But now that I have a cold friend it's all different. What can I do? I don't even know him. Puppy giggled. Silly voice, but he knows you. And don't worry, I am the best love expert ever. Really? Whoa. I always 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 wanted to know about love. Can you teach me? The filly held up a hoof. Yush. Dr. Pup Love will teach you, and you will be best lover ever. Why a why? Now that the long dead foal and the part TA had a real topic to discuss trivial things as the utter destruction of a pony settlement, and unleashing a weapon of mass destruction rightfully slipped away from their attention. First lesson, the dangers of love, cooties. Day 12, time approximately 12.30 p.m., location, Broccoli, Big 52S Branch. Two of the guards on the wall were looking down at the foal as she talked and giggled to herself, while their fellow sentries kept watch for any sign of another suspicious movement from south. One of them scratched his head and muttered, we should at least tell her to go away. The second guard sighed, hitting his friend on the head. Yeah, sure, are you going to tell her that? After we've seen what happened to the rangers at Ivory Tower. No thanks. You heard the radio. She is dangerous. Let's wait until she gives up and moves away. But if she doesn't go away. Then what? I think that some pony should go down there and shoo her. Sure, great idea. And who's going to tell her that? Phew. The elder guard emphasized the concept by knocking his colleague on the head again. Hey, stop hitting me. Why don't we send the mayor? We elected her for this kind of thing, after all. The veteran stopped his hoof a moment before hitting the other guard for a third time, and instead he tapped his chin. Do you know? That's not a bad idea, not bad at all. Day 12, time approximately 12.45 p.m., location, Broccoli, Big 52S Branch. Half an hour of explanations later. P7 knew everything she needed to know about love, at least from Puppy's point of view. Alright, so, kisses are E-E-E-W, but they are cool if they have explosions in the background, or a fitting music. Yep. Puppy nodded with the expression of a pony who knows a lot of things. Still, I'm not sure I understood the part with making foals. A, that's quite a difficult part, I'm almost sure that there are a mom and a dad involved. Mom told me that you had to love Dad very super much, and it involved a letter to Pretty Princess Celestia, but the teacher at the kindergarten told me a story with cabbages and Pretty Princess Luna. 
My old school friend Greensleeves told me it involved also a lot of rumbling and that it was super gross, and that when she had caught her mom and dad on the couch they got super angry and her mom scolded her dad because he didn't lock the door. And the day after she explained to Greensleeves that they were giving her a little sister, Puppy paused for a moment, trying to remember something else. I think that sending a letter is better. It also explains why I can't have a full love mine, since I can't write. All right, and what about poetry? Oh, that's easy. To fall in love you look out of the window, and then your real love will come out of a bush and sing you a song, or tell you some mighty beautiful poem, and you will love him, and all. That doesn't sense very much, objected the computer. Love doesn't make sense at all. Besides, I've seen it in a show called Colteo and Filiette, it was boring as hell and boring things are always instructive, so it must be true. Okie dokie. You are the expert here. Reply P7, now positively convinced. So, what do I do now? Who is this lover of mine? I'm so excited, aren't you excited? When am I going to meet him? Whoa, hold your horses. He must do the first move. It's always the colt that goes to the filly, not the opposite. Puppy sighed. Really, were you listening before? I'll call him and tell that you don't like him at all, then. Hey you there, a voice called. But Puppy was far too busy with matters of the heart to pay attention. But I liked him. I want to meet him, but you didn't tell me his name. Protested the AI. Puppy helmet hoofed. Of course I didn't tell you. He's a secret admirer. Do you want to spoil everything? Do you want to lose your true love forever? Ahem, excuse me. The voice interrupted again but the foe waved a hoof at it, trying to get it to be quiet. P7's voice panicked. No, no. I don't want to be alone for all of my existence. I'll do like you say puppy I'm completely in your hoofs. Please don't let me down. The filly nodded, satisfied. Very well, stick to my master plan, and you will be happy ever after. Hey, stop ignoring me, little filly. A hoof knocked on Puppy's helmet forcing the full into diverting her attention from Miss Voice's love affairs to the annoying pony in front of her. She was an earth pony mare, with a helmet, a light combat saddle, and a lever action rifle standing directly in front of Puppy, with an annoyed expression. I'm the sheriff and the mayor of Broccoli, you can't stay here, please go away. Puppy sighed. Excuse me, Miss Voice, it seems that some ponies can't really wait their turn, I'll call you later. The filly moved her attention toward the mare, and her annoyed expression quickly changed to a broad friendly smile, when she realized that the pony came from inside the wall. Hi. I'm Puppy Smiles. Have you seen my mom? I tried knocking at the door but not pony opened it for me, and all those funny faces up on the wall must be completely deaf. The mare sighed, waving a hoof. Wait, stop talking, and listen. You can't come inside the town. There are raiders all around the place, and you are not welcome here. I'm here to tell you to go away, we don't want you. Puppy kept smiling while she replied. Silly pony, I can't go away. Mr. Voice says that my mom is inside this place. I have to find her so that everything will be alright. The little pony giggled. What the, are you stupid, or what? You arrived from Ivory Tower, and that place was completely destroyed just the other day. We aren't a superstitious herd, but it seems quite obvious that you don't bring good luck with you, so just live with it. You can't get in, now go away, or we will shoot you down. But I need to find my mother. Puppy please? Puppy tried her best begging eyes, making the pony step back for a moment. A no is a no. Now go away, or you will be killed. This is my last warning. The little filly sat on ground, looking at the mare while bouting. BB but, my mom, please, please. The foal began sobbing. No, please, don't cry. Aren't you supposed to be some sort of immortal hero? The mare had been prepared to send away a big badass wasteland dweller, but a crying foal was not on her list. This little pony had no dignity at all. The mare looked up to the walls, begging for some help from the mercenaries, but all she got back were just shrugs. Damn, this filly saved their families, they won't shoot for sure, okay, okay. You win. 
Just don't cry. All right. Stop crying. You can come inside and I'll accompany you through the town so that you can look for your mother. The foal sniffed a little, muttering her reply. You don't want to find my mom for real. You just want me to go away. Why you don't want to be my friend, Miss Pretty Pony? The mare snorted. Don't make me change my mind. We will get inside but you have to follow some rules. No weapons, no stealing, no annoying the guards, and the most important one, stop whining. Puppy smiled and trotted to the mare. Okie dokie. I like you Miss Pretty Pony. What's your name? The guard sighed and looked away. Boiled broccoli. Now behave and follow me. Okay. I don't like broccoli. How can a pony have a broccoli cutie mark? It's terrible. Protested Puppy. Broccoli is all we have here. You better learn to like broccoli because you won't get anything else for lunch, dinner, breakfast, or a snack. Oh, and they aren't for free. Day 12, time approximately 13.30 p.m. Location, Broccoli, Big 52S Branch. The mayor of Broccoli stepped inside the town hall while talking with Puppy. All right, kid, here we are, Rainy Days Hall. I'm not sure that it has something to do with your mother, but the town hall was here since the days of the war. Its name comes from all the writings on the walls. Take your time. The mayor took a look back at Puppy to see if the foal was listening, but her charge was instead engaged in conversation with her own helmet. Boiled Broccoli shook her head. So I told her that you were super shy, and she seemed really interested. Now you must write her a love poem. You called me just because you want me to declare my love to another artificial intelligence. I have a lot of things to do, like keeping together a band of brainless cutthroats, and you call me for such an idiocy. Please, tell me, did I do something wrong? Puppy stopped for a moment, pondering Solo's question, before nodding. Yup totally, but we can't fix that and she doesn't really know that you were a bug and a stinker. Now, about that love poem. I don't want to write love poems. Stop calling me. Oh, you're so sweet. Okie dokie, I'll help you with this one. Tell me, what do you like in Miss Voice? Ah, uh, she has a surprisingly powerful firewall and her routines seem to work better while she is multitasking. I also found that her antivirus suite was well programmed and up to date and wait, why am I playing your game? I'm out of here and stop calling me. With these last words Solos closed the communication, leaving Puppy alone with Broccoli's town hall. The mayor sighed, looking at the foal. So are you done? Want a cup of tea? The sarcasm was evident in her voice, but using sarcasm against Puppy was just like honking a horn to make a deaf pony move. Ah, uh, no thanks, I can't take off the helmet. The filly stepped in the large room filled with lots of chairs and a large desk. On the entrances left there was a line of windows looking outside, but all the other walls were covered with graffiti. Puppy couldn't remember being in this place before, so she hadn't the slightest idea of where to look. Ah, uh, can I have some help, please? Boiled broccoli sighed. What now? Can't you even read? The mare pointed at the walls. It's all there. The foe looked away, a little embarrassed. Ah, uh, it's not that I can't read, but, well, I have problems with some letters, and I'm not very good with long words. Listen, I've read all this stuff like a hundred times. It says that one day a mare named Rainy Days arrived here from a military base in the north and founded the place. There were troubles and ponies were dying, so she wrote some important rules on these walls. The pony pointed at a long list of written words placed just behind the big desk. See? They're still there anyhow. She had been the first mayor of this place, as you can see on the mayor's list there. But after her there were at least five other Rainy Days. It's a pretty common name around these parts. Puppy Smiles tilted her head, trying to understand what the mare was telling her, but everything she got from her fast synopsis could be summarized like this. What? Boiled sighed. Why me? Listen, we are in a situation of danger here. A big band of raiders is assaulting the city south of here and they could be hitting us very soon. I have no time to help you finding a 200 years old mare. Please, go away and leave us be. There is nothing for you in this place. Honest. 
Puppy frowned, she didn't understand everything, but it seemed that her mom had been here, and now was gone, again, if only this pretty pony could tell her where mom went this time it would have been awesome, but it seemed that she didn't want to help Puppy. Ah, uh, if you help me, I'll give you this, Puppy looked inside her bags, searching for something pretty to barter. It's a barter, it's okay because every pony does that. The filly found Fuzzy Ball, but she didn't want to give away her pet, no. It was better to keep Fuzzy hidden before some pony noticed her. There were many other things that she could offer, like some empty bottles of Sparkle Cola, a bag of pretty caps, a brush, a Lyra. Wait, what? The foal gave a better look at the doll to be really sure, but it was impossible not to recognize that gorgeous coat and wonderful flowing mane. Whoa. He gave me the pretty green pony. Look. Puppy showed the green plastic unicorn to boiled broccoli. What now? The mare raised an eyebrow, confused. Mr. Redcape. He gave me his doll. She is so cute. I love her. The filly hugged the doll in a burst of happiness. This is the best hoy ever. She still has all her mane in its place. And her tail too. The outburst of joy made the guard pony smile for a moment, but she immediately reverted to her scowl. Foals were annoying, that was all. Yes, so what? Are you trying to make me help you in exchange for a doll? Puppy froze on the spot, her joy disappearing in sudden realization. Phew, you want her? Be but the foal looked at the mare, then at the doll, and again at the mare, hesitating. This toy was really beautiful, and it was so new, but Miss Broccoli wanted it in order to help Puppy finding Mom. Sacrifices, always sacrifices, why the stupid place was taking from her every single nice thing she had. Not fair, not fair at all, but these were the rules and mom was somewhere out there. Ah, uh, if you help me finding mom, puppy hesitated before nodding, resigned. Okay, I'm giving you the cute doll. But please, will you help me? This was a hard blow. The doll was a present, but mom, no puppy. Don't think about it, when you'll find mom all of this will go away. Just one more town. Boiled broccoli cocked her head. What the fuck, is she holding back tears? Does she really believe that I want her doll? What am I doing, teasing foals and extorting toys? When did I become like this? The mare looked away, lowering her voice. I, I might help you. I think that there is some sort of computer with a logbook. We can search together in the first entries to see if there's something regarding this rainy days. Come with me the little pony inside the guard felt very, very ashamed of herself. Day 12, time approximately 14.15 p.m., location, Broccoli, Big 52S Branch. Could you please speak a little lower? I'm trying to find some clues about your mother. While you play Serrano de Puppy Smiles. Boiled Broccoli groaned, trying to ignore puppies chatting on the radio. And put her hooves over her ears. Yush. He says he's super in love, he likes your, uh, stuff, and some other stuff of yours and he said something about a wall, that burned, I didn't understand everything, but he seemed so hot. P7's voice was dancing the pony pokey, out of joy. Yay. He likes me. I'm so happy I can't believe I don't even know who we're talking about. Do you know, after that hacking attempt from the other day I was quite depressed, it seemed that anything out there existed with the sole purpose of bullying me, but now that I have a secret lover my life is pink. Yep, yeah, I know I'm the best, no need to thank me, now, your next move is waiting until he confesses himself, then you refuse him. There was a long pause. What? I think I heard you wrong. This is funny, it seemed to me that you told I had to refuse him. Puppy nodded wisely. Presses, presses, P-R-E-E-A-E-Y-U-P. -E -E you must always refuse him the first time, so he feels bad and loves you even more. Remember the rules. Oh, right, the rules. Okie dokie, let's do this by the book. I'll leave everything to your master plan then. Puppy smiled. Don't worry, you won't regret this. Now I really have to go because Miss Broccoli is trying to find my mom. I'll call you later and tell you what to do. Okay, I eat okie. Okie dokie loki. Later. The communication was interrupted while Puppy earned her attention toward the pony at the terminal. Ah, uh, did you find something, Miss Pretty Pony? 
You mean while you were giving sage advice about love to your friends? Yes, I found something. The mayor turned the computer screen towards Puppy smiles. Is this your mother? The filly smiled happily. Yes. Mom. Isn't she beautiful? My mom is the best mom ever. It was a repertory photo with the mare wearing her military technician suit and a helmet. The earth pony was slim and not very tall. Puppy shared the line of her muzzle and her eyes. All right, here it says that she moved south to Emerald Shores. Doesn't say why, but it was almost two centuries ago. I don't think that. Where is Emerald Shores? Puppy asked promptly. South, past Ironworks, you can't miss it, because there's only ocean past Emerald Shores. Puppy's ears moved a little. You said, that place is the last one along this stupid road. Yes, it's the last city along the Big 52, but you shouldn't call it. Why a why? I found Mom. There's no other place where to go. Mom is in Emerald Shores. The filly jumped all around the room, faster than a filly on a sugar bomb and sparkle cola trip. Well, actually if you follow the coast there's the NCA, and you don't give a fuck, right? You aren't even listening anymore. The filly was already out in the road, and was running toward the walls, boiled broccoli side. Oh well, at least I got rid of her. Trotting outside the town hall the mare was surprised to find Puppy waiting for her, especially after having seen her zooming away. What now? Weren't you chasing your mom? The foal took the green unicorn doll from her bag and offered it to Boiled. Ah, please love her and brush her. Her name is Lyra and she is a really, really awesome friend. The guard refused the doll, sighing. Keep that thing. I'm not stealing toys from the foals. Just get out of my town as soon as possible and don't come back. We already have our load of troubles. Puppy hesitated a moment. But if you want, I can't take the doll anyway. That last line gave the filly the motivation she needed to move. The foal hid the brushable toy in her bag and zoomed away, leaving alone a snickering boiled broccoli. K thank you bye. Goodbye, whiny ghost. The mare sighed one last time, then raised her voice yelling at the ponies on the walls. Let the foal go out and close the doors again. Organize for another night with double shifts. Make sure every farm lights a fire and keep your eyes open. Winds of war were blowing in the air, and that yellow pony was running straight into the storm. Oh well, not Boiled's problem at all. Day 12, time approximately 5 p.m., location, Broccoli Fields, Big 52S Branch. What do you want again? Solo's exasperation was palpable in his voice, but Puppy didn't care. Hi, Mr. Blue. I talked with Pink and she is very, very interested in meeting you. She said she feels so lonely and wants new friends. What the? Wait, you convinced that artificial intelligence in Solaris Tunnel 2 to let me access its storage? Are you serious? While zooming through the last fields south of Broccoli, Puppy frowned. I am always serious. Yes, she is waiting for you to sing her a serenade, so make a super romantic song and go to her so you will fall in love and you will be happy ever after. There was a long pause before Solo spoke again and when he did so, he was confused. Ah, uh, thank you. I was convinced this P7 was a friend of yours, can I ask you why you are backstabbing her like this? It doesn't seem rational, not that I expect anything rational from you anyway. Back what? Listen, it's easy. You are a voice, she is a voice, and both of you are very, very lonely. I'm mighty sure that when you will meet you will be super friends, and since I am friend with both of you I want you to be friend with each other. That's all. Another long pause rolled away with the road, before Solos replied. Friends, you say? We'll see, I could use a strategic ally, after all. When the communication was cut, the radio replaced Mr. Blue's voice. Tonight I can't say it's a good night, my little ponies. Not earlier than half an hour ago, Ironworks launched a cry for help. The ponies in the fortified town are under siege, apparently attacked by an horde of well-armed and organized raiders. If this is the wild herd, we have never seen them like this before. They have heavy weapons, combat robots, and fight like an organized group. I have no idea of what's going on behind the scenes, Big 52, 
But if we don't react now, it could be too late. And to show that lonesome pony is not all talk and no meat, I'm flying to the front with my old rifle on my shoulders. DJ Good Stuff will take care of the radio in my absence. Be kind with her and help her like you did with me from LP. That is all. Have a last song. Blessed bodies of the heavens, sun and moon, of greatest light, bathe us in your warm embraces, shield us with your peerless light, help us to stand firm as mountains doing right and shunning wrong. May we find our strength and friendship, unite our hurt as one group strong. Footnote, level up. 14. Newbrick added, boisterous incompetence, yuck, don't worry, I know exactly what I am, D-boom. During dialogues or skill tests, if your skill has less than half the required score for succeeding in the feat, you get special dialogue options that have a 50% chance of success. Beware, if you fail this test, the results will be way worse than a usual failure. Link to Chapter 14 Link to Chapter 16 this fanfiction is based on Fallout Equestria by Cut. A familiarity with the source material may aid your understanding. You can read Fallout Equestria by Cut on Equestria Daily. If you enjoy Fallout Equestria Psy Stories, you will want to check the Fallout Equestria Psy Stories post on Equestria Daily and the Fallout Equestria Psy Stories thread on Pony Chan. The Pony Chan group is also a hatching ground that you can join if you want to share your experience writing our comments with us. Huge thanks to Ayasa and Anand Samurai for helping me both with the language and the eternal struggle of keeping the story on its trail circumflex circumflex. The Equestria Anthem lyrics are from this video http www.youtube.com slash watch v equals is 0147 aq.